Welcome back to Workshop Friend and this second video on the topic of dealing with rust in my home workshop. I wasn't anticipating doing two videos on this topic. Uh, it was really a quick video I put out. And many very helpful comments came in and it's on the basis of that that I feel compelled really to do a second video. Well from your many helpful comments uh, I think top of the list was using a more suitable product than WD-40 for protecting machine ways and other machine surfaces on my equipment and uh, so I'm going to be swapping over um, from WD-40 to more suitable products. You mentioned products such as duck oil, uh, lanolin based products, uh, ACF50 which I have here and we're going to try out soon, uh, Bow Shield T9 I think it was, um, or just simply engine oil or wax based products. So I'm going to start with this and good old engine oil and we'll see how we get on and maybe I'll try some duck oil as well. That will go some way I think to curing my problem but I think at the fundamental level it's condensation that I need to look at. So others of your comments were also very helpful. Better temperature control. So that I think was probably second on the list after uh, more suitable spray products. So better temperature control and that takes the form of two um, approaches. One is insulation and of course that's what I started to do last video was to insulate the major source of heat loss, the front door. Um, and then the other side of the equation is putting heat into the workshop. Uh, today I've actually got a heater running um, and the temperature is slowly creeping up. I think when I came in this morning it was 35, yeah, 35 uh, Fahrenheit which is about 2 degrees C and it's crept up now to yeah 40. And then humidity, uh, I'd mentioned humidity was a problem and so uh, many of you use dehumidifiers. Um, I'm going to reserve that as bottom of the list for me because of the expense um, and I'm going to try and deal with um, the situation through these other methods. Now ventilation was also mentioned and there were those who are advocating more ventilation and those who are saying I need to cut the ventilation down. So exactly the opposite. Now I think it depends on your local situation. And for me, I think I had too much ventilation. I had a lot of open spaces here where the air could flow through. And I think for me what was happening was the workshop was cooling down in cold weather, even cold dry weather. And then what would happen is the weather would suddenly change, warmer, more humid air would come through and because of the leaky workshop space here that humid air would come in and cause condensation on the cold machinery, the cold surfaces. So the first thing I needed to deal with was ventilation. I had too much ventilation in this workshop with a leaky front door and also a massive hole up here which goes into the loft. Now the loft space is insulated up in the eaves but this more than one square meter of open space which I'll show you was a problem. I've made a trap door and um, I made it out of scrap that's why it's this kind of shape and I'm going to insulate this so that uh, the trap door itself will be um, you know will minimize heat loss. Uh, it's also got um, um, I'm not sure what you call it a jam a door jam around the outside there so it minimizes airflow and I blocked up this space around here which was also open. So that's why I think in my workshop ventilation, excessive ventilation was an issue. I'm also um, filling in the eaves with this um, foil backed foam which I'm cutting to shape and um, fitting in there and actually that's going in very easily. Uh, it's quite nice stuff to use. Yes, yeah, so I'm working around the garage space. Now at the same time I'm also having to apply woodworm treatment so I'm uh, uh, before I cover up uh, areas which will then be inaccessible I'm just applying that spray as I go around. So I'm going to continue doing that. Um, I'm leaving the heater on and we'll see as I work through the day if the temperature comes up as I put a little bit of heat, it's only one kilowatt, into the workshop and try and improve the insulation and reduce the uh, ventilation.
So it's Sunday morning. I've come into the workshop having spent a day uh, on the insulation yesterday, but I had to stop because I'd run out of insulation board, which you can see there on the roof. Um, two thirds of the roof or two thirds of the ceiling have been completed, but this portion is still to be done, including the hatch door. But the real reason for coming in this morning is because the temperature has changed dramatically here. We had a couple of days where it was barely above freezing and then suddenly today it's 13 degrees C outside. So I wanted to come in and check on condensation because it was under, it was under these weather conditions that last time I had the flash rusting. Now today in the workshop it is uh, 46 Fahrenheit or 8 degrees C and outside it's 13 degrees and very humid a lot of rain so condensations everywhere let me show you okay this is the outside this is the rear door which is uninsulated and you can see condensation so that's condensation on the outside of the workshop because the inside is cool so you can see there the floor uh, adjacent to the door that's not damp coming up through the floor that's actually condensation so i think what was happening is the is that warm air is coming in from outside and it's condensing on the cold floor and uh, this door as i just mentioned is uninsulated now that means that these conditions are ideal for testing whether the improved insulation and reduced ventilation has helped with flash rusting and as you can see without any additional rust protection on the machinery i haven't got around to that yet uh, no flash rusting so i'm really really pleased about that uh, so um, i think uh, this is encouragement for me to keep going now that's not to say that we're not on the verge of a problem because look i don't know if you can see that there is a little bit of condensation on here uh, but not to the extent that it's causing the problems I had before. So um, I'm hopeful that with further draft proofing uh, around this door, with draft proofing around the rear door, and with um, further insulation in the roof, and some rust um, protective film on the machinery, and possibly some heating i'm hopeful that i can cure this problem but it's certainly encouragement for me to keep going with this project okay a bit of an update it's now several hours later four hours later i put the heater on in the workshop most of the time the doors have been closed but of course i did open them earlier and that did let in some humid air and of course there is a little bit of natural ventilation with humid air coming in from outside it's remained very mild outside the temperature in here now is 50 so that's 10 degrees c but the machinery is still cold and not only is it cold but there's a lot of condensation taking place i think you can see here as well, uh, lots of condensation. Worst of all is the milling machine. Uh, look at that, you can actually see the water and the, I guess that's sort of emulsified WD-40 from before. Everything is wringing wet. Now, I'm not giving up, I'm not despairing. I think that the issue is that I need to stop the workshop from cooling down. So what's happened? I think uh, as I look back over the last 24 hours or 36 hours, when I came in here at um, 8 o'clock yesterday morning, uh, the temperature was 35 Fahrenheit or 1.5 degrees C. And I worked most of the day in those conditions, installing the insulation, primarily in the ceiling here, but also the eaves. Uh, the eaves have cut down draft, which is very important. 
and uh, provide a little bit of insulation, but of course it's these panels in the ceiling which is providing the majority of the insulation. In a sense, what I did yesterday was not helpful in terms of testing the effectiveness of this insulation. Everything was already cold. The machinery, everything was down to around about 2 degrees C already because of a couple of days of cold weather. So really the benefit of the insulation is going to be felt when it's all installed and then the weather turns cold. Hopefully it will stop things from cooling down too quickly so that when it warms up again the machinery is at a closer um, temperature to the surrounding environment. Now of course what happened today was I opened the door and I let in warm well, relatively warm humid air and that's what's caused this condensation. I don't think this is primarily a dampness problem in the building although it's not perfect but I think the real issue has been the humidity coming in from outside. So what we need to do really is continue the insulation, finish it off, maybe uh, attend to some of the areas where we need some better draft proofing particularly on the back door and then repeat the test and see what happens with full insulation uh, waiting for the temperature to drop and then warm up again. That I think will be a fairer test. So in the meantime I need to go around wipe down my machinery and put some of that spray on. I'm going to use the AS, uh, ACF 50 to start with and give that a go. Uh, so yeah I need to do that today before the rust settles in. A couple of days later and I've now completed the whole of the ceiling there's no space left that isn't insulated, including the hatch, as you can see there. What I'm doing now is just uh, putting battens up just to provide a bit of extra support so they don't slip down again. So this is a graph showing the ambient temperature for where we live. That's this pencil line here. And the temperature in the workshop showed by the crosses and um, represented by blue and red lines. Now the blue lines represent when the heating's off and the red lines represent when the heating comes on. So you can see that whenever I operated the heater the temperature went up in the workshop and I operated the heater one, two, three, four, five times in the past week. And uh, this was just for an hour, I think it was, or half an hour, but these were for extended periods. And it's interesting that um, Sunday was when I recorded that there was condensation in the workshop and indeed outside the workshop on the outside of the rear door. And you can see why, because the night before we went down to minus 5 and in the daytime the next day we went up to plus 14. But the temperature in the workshop was obviously somewhere between the two and the workshop was cooler than the outside temperature. So that's when we got condensation and uh, that, that's something to watch out for. So at the beginning of the week this is when I started to put the insulation in the roof and I did most of the work on this day and I completed it here. And uh, you can see that um, we had a very um, low temperature and um, we managed to raise the temperature inside the workshop a little bit. Um, now here um, we've also had a couple of cool nights um, so minus two, minus two, zero. So there's been opportunity for the workshop to cool down somewhat. Um, but what I find more interesting is that as time's gone on, the length of the line 
when the heating has been on has increased. You can argue about where they are relative to each other, but the length of the line has grown. And I think that reflects the improved insulation in the workshop. So that's a good sign. Now, something else I'd just like to uh, share. In the workshop, I've got uh, a lathe, mini machine, a shaper, um, smaller lathe, pillar drill, and some other equipment. And I reckon there's about, about 2,500 kilograms, roughly, of cast iron in all of that. So about two and a half tons. And we can do a little sum to look at how much heat needs to go into the machinery to raise the temperature. So the calorific value of cast iron, which is the majority of what my equipment's made of, is about 550 joules per kilogram C. Let's just see what happens if I raise the temperature from 2 to 10 C. So a difference of 8. We can do the sum for that. So that will be 554 times um, our mass, which is 2,500 kilograms, times a temperature difference of 8 degrees C, or 8 C, and that equals around about 11 megajoules. Now, I've been running a 1 kilowatt um, electric heater, and if I run that for one hour, I will get 1,000 joule, joules per second times 3,600 seconds, and that works out at 3.6 megajoules per hour. So that means that if I want to heat up the equipment by 8 degrees C, um, it's going to take me 11 over 3.6, which is around about 3 hours. So that tells me that regardless of my insulation, if I have perfect insulation, I just need to put three hours of heating of a one kilowatt fire into my equipment to raise its temperature from 2 to 10 degrees C and I think that's interesting fact. Well that concludes the second video on trying to eliminate rust from my workshop. Uh, in a future video I'm going to be comparing different kinds of rust inhibitor and seeing how effective they are at least for me in my workshop.